It is Tuesday, June 27th, 2017. This is Room in the Trees, a podcast about experiences, living, art making, arting around, art situations. The following was recorded on June 15th, 2017, episode 45, Full Circle. Room in the Trees is hosted by Trent Reynolds and me, Sabrina Harrison. Show notes, including pictures, links, video, and more for every episode can be found at roomintheTrees.com. If you like this podcast, please consider showing your support and you can become a subscribing patron at patreon.com forward slash room. And please, please, uh, please, please, please leave us at uh, iTunes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it, will, it really helps you reach a, a wider audience. Please leave us a review on iTunes. <laughs> we really could use your support. <laughs> That's really great. Uh, I'm excited about this episode. It's with Allison, who was in the first True Living Experience weekend of June 2nd through 4th. And it's a wonderful conversation. Happy Father's Day, Trent. Oh, yeah. Happy Father's Day, Trent. That's right. It's coming up. I'd... That's right. You're a father. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Times over, three times over. Three times over. Three times over. Yeah. It's hard to hard to believe. It what really are you is. Do? Uh, I have no idea. Actually, I I overheard Liv saying to Laura this morning, "We got to do something for Father's Day." And Laura and Laura said, "What do you want to do?" And she said, "We sh- we should cook him bacon." That's what I just was going to say. Cause <laughs> isn't that what happened last time on your birthday or something? Yes, yes. That's yeah. always the go-to bacon. answer. And bacon. then she said, "Then we can eat it too." And then we can eat it too. She's yeah. adorable. She's precious. Yeah. Oh. Um, exciting. So. So let's uh, introduce Allison. Yes. Allison. Okay. You came to the True Living Experience in Madison, June 2nd through 4th, 2017. So that was the first the first weekend, right? Yes, it was the yes. first weekend. Inaugural weekend, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. Absolutely. <clears throat> and so how much should we do you want to share a little bit about what you where you live and what you do and sure. maybe what what why you decided to how the how the evolution of you arriving to Madison was. Right. How it happened. Know. Yes. The story. Um, so I live in Maryland and you know, Sabrina, as you know, and I think a lot of people at the workshop were in the kind of the same way where we've been following you for quite a while and just really resonated with uh, the work that you were doing and the way that you kind of talked about the creative process. And when you offered this really intimate creative experience, it just, it felt like such an amazing opportunity. And um, I am not a trained artist. So, and and I think that that's important because I got so much out of this experience, even not having gone to art school and, you know, not not being in, I guess, the professional art world. I I feel like this, the true living experience is, is open to everybody who just wants to really dive in and, 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 get into their creative process and kind of access that. I I fell in love with Madison too. It was the perfect venue for you this. Totally did. I did. I was smitten. Like Can you say one. what you do for your job back home, what your professional oh, life yeah, is sure. like? So yeah, please feel free to redirect me too, you know, because I can I might go off on tangents. That's so, all right. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. Just redirect. Um, so I am a therapist at home in Maryland um, for children and adolescents. I teach yoga and part-time. And um, and then on my free time, I like to write and I, and I paint a little bit with wax. So that's kind of my medium of choice right now. Um, which I know, Trent, you've been, you probably have more experience than I do, but I've seen some of your posts on Instagram. Yes, and, I've been loving wax recently. I was gonna say that. The- yeah. It's it's magical stuff. I love it. It really is. I think what I love best about it is it kind of is its own animal. Mm-hmm. And it it comes alive. Like when I take the the torch to it and I just and it 
moves around the the wood and it just and the shapes that come out of it are something I couldn't have planned Mm -hmm. but it's also really forgiving yeah I when I was I've been thinking recently that I think the reason I love it so much is basically what you're saying that there's this immediacy you know Mm -hmm. like it Mm -hmm. there's an immediate response to whatever you're doing so either you're heating it up or it's cooling and it's like active both both directions, like immediately. So it's either immediately wet and runny and moving or immediately dry and, and you can touch it and carve into it. And so it's just like, it's the quickness of being able to think and act, you know, whereas with oil paint or even acrylic, there's a certain amount of waiting you have to do in between phases of dryness. Was with, with wax, I just, I don't know, I love that being able to move quickly and mm-hmm. have it respond to Uh, whatever it is that I'm thinking in the moment. Could you guys talk a little bit about how to work with it if if someone with all the clicking's happening again? Oh, no, that's me. I'm sorry. I'm (laughs) I'm fidgeting. Fidgeting, sorry. Um, With what? how someone would set up that to do, say, in their own home, to do it, and how... Oh, that's great. Where you guys do it, or, yeah. Because I don't have a studio. I actually, Mm -hmm. we got rid of our we moved our dining room furniture into the kitchen and we made our dining room my kind of little art play area. And so right now I have this old barn door standing on two saw horses along the wall and that's my art table. And, and yeah, I'll send you a picture when we're done. I have, basically I went out and it took me probably about a year to kind of figure this out is I got, an, I got a griddle, just like a pancake griddle mm. from, from um, I think I just went to Target and got a griddle. And, and then I can have all of the aluminum cans or the aluminum, I just, and I went to the grocery store and you, can, you know how you can buy those tiny little aluminum bread pans, mm-hmm. right? And so I got a bunch of those and then, and then I melt the wax paint in each one of those and it's already set up and ready to go. So I can plug the griddle into the wall and everything starts cooking. That's and so weird. it's like, you know, it's really funny though. My husband, um, Matt, he's a firefighter. So he's, he's <laughs> right. So I have this, I have these torches and I have this <laughs> heat gun and I'm cooking this wax yeah. at 150 degrees. Yeah. And he's, he's very, he's so polite about it. But as soon as I'm done, he kind of gently circulates through the room. <laughs> and he's, yeah. you know, and I, I'm like, I know what you're doing. And he's just, he's just making sure everything's safe and unplugged and, you know, taking good care of us. But um, nothing smoldering or. <laughs> right. What about, it doesn't, it, the wax has to have to mix with resin? I buy, I am not that um, talented yet. So I buy actually I buy the R and F paints and you can get them on Amazon, um, okay. and they come in these little cubes, and it's perfect. And I just go to I go to the to the um, to Home Depot and I buy a bunch of those uh, horsehair bristle or brushes because uh-huh. if you have synthetic brushes, the wax will. This was a personal mistake. Oh, if I you bet. have a learning experience, <laughs> if you have synthetic brushes the wax melts all of them together and you end up with like a mono brush. Mm, um, mono, mono brush, mono cough. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and and so, so it's got to be some sort of natural occurring hair or fiber in the brushes, but you can get a bunch of them for 55 cents at your local hardware store. And, <laughs> and that's the way know, we like it. Yeah, right, nice and easy. And then um, I usually paint on wood, and I and just paint over with a with some uh, white gesso, and then I just go for it, and mm. and then that way what happens is the, the wax can soak into the wood and it can soak into the gesso, and you get this this really kind of solid piece of artwork. See now. Now the totally thing is, solid. <laughs> totally oh. solid, right? Yeah. So Trent, I would love to hear kind of how you do it because I was so I didn't go to a class or anything. I tried and set a lot of things on fire, and um, figured it out over probably about three years. 
So I'm curious about your setup and how that looks different from mine. Well, I, I'm actually not too far from you in terms of experience with wax. I, did, I never took a class in it, but it, obviously there are quite a bit of similarities between it and other painting media. So I did have a, you know, an art school background, but um, essentially it was the same. My approach was the same as yours. I, I went on Craigslist and got a griddle and I went to uh, Salvation Army and tried to pick up any kind of hot plate or um, any heating thing of any kind, just out of curiosity to see what I could what I could do with different heating implements. What did you notice? Uh, well, I had some successes and failures. I actually I still have uh, a hot plate that I picked up in a Chicago. Uh, I don't know if it's Salvation Army or some other thrift store, mm -hmm. but. Um, and it's awesome. Uh, these these old, uh, I don't know. It looks like it was kind of '70s color, kind of that that mm -hmm. pea, pea green, mm -hmm. and uh, fake wood, um, plastic uh, handles or something like that. <laughs> anyway, it, it's it's still ticking, man. It is fantastic, and to be able to to uh, use that as both a palette, so I'll mix colors on the on the hot plate. Oh yeah. And then um, I'll also use it to, I'll put like a piece of paper on the hot plate, paint on it, and then I'll collage the paper onto the surface that I'm working on. So it can also act as a heating uh, element for collage, collage stuff. What's your collaging process with the, yeah. with the wax? Oh, it's all, that's the thing is wax is so much fun. So I've got oh, this little tra travel iron that's uh, you know probably about as big as the palm of my hand mm -hmm. my studio mates are always laughing at me when they come through my space and they see me like this you know big body holding this tiny little tra <laughs> travel iron <laughs> over a small piece of wood it's like I'm playing with a miniature set or something but um, I'll put the I'll put paper and I also use muslin which is a really thin uh, cotton very porous and um I put the paper down, and if the wax that's down is, is soft enough, I don't have to put any heat on it. But if, if it's hard, then I can either use that baby iron to, to iron the paper on there so it melts the wax below and it'll kind of mm. embalm it. Or I can use a heat gun to, to, to warm it up and have it stick. So anyway, so I've been doing collage, and then I build up a layer of collage and fabric and stuff about half inch thick and then I'll use uh, carving tools to dig into it and pull it off and yeah anyway just very very visceral physical media do you right, use resin oh yeah do go you ahead use resin with it I guess I keep going back to like what makes <coughs> what's harden, hardening the wax and how well see here's a, it here's the deal with wax is uh, wax as you probably noticed with any uh, with like a cheap candle or really any candle it has what's called bloom and that's when the pigment that's coloring the wax kind of pulls towards the center of the candle or the center of the wax and makes everything on the outside look kind of uh, ghosty, kind mm -hmm. of uh, um, like really white and creamy looking. Um, so to, to uh, pre prevent that from happening, you put DeMar resin in yeah. with the mixture, mm -hmm. which is when you, so when you're buying RNF, you're buying it um, pre-mixed with usually beeswax and some Damar resin. Yeah. So the resin yeah. hardens it so it's not as delicate and, and can take a little bit more abuse on the surface, um, but it also prevents it from uh, from bloom okay. happening. So. And isn't that toxic to have the resin? Boy, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have, and I know in our, I mean, in our house, we just have, we have this big box fan that I set up on, I mean, I make myself into a little bit of a wind tunnel and set it up on one side and I have the windows open on the other side. So, you know, as much as I can, I'm getting all of that pushing out. And then I watch the temperature pretty closely too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they make uh, these grill thermometers that you can get um, and just put on the hot plate to watch temperature. Yeah. You know, Trent, you know what I love most about wax is that mm. you can get your, what you said about the physicality of it is mm -hmm. so great. I mean, you can really get in there. You can, I mean, you can carve, you can dig, you can put images in there, you can do image transfers and, and, you know, and if you don't like any of it, you can just heat it up and scrape it all off. 
yep. and start yep. over. Yeah, I love that about it too. I had a, a friend in grad school that used to do these big things with crayons, which typically you don't want to use because crayon wax is really cheap and will will kind of go bad on you and flake mm -hmm. off really easily. But he would put these, have these big boards, and he'd line up crayons right next to each other, and then cover them with like a gray wax, and then take take a tool and start excavating into the lay and like. So he, he kind of pulled out the different colors of crayons. I don't, I don't know how to describe it very well, but there were just these beautiful rows of crayon colors that he, um, again, it was like an excavation almost, like he was pulling away layers until he got down to the colored crayons. Oh, oh God, cool. that sounds yummy. Yeah. Sort of like the way a floor would have, like layers of paint on a wall. Kind of like that. I'm trying to think of like what a good analogy would be. It was like, uh, uh, like a. No, I can't think of any good examples. <laughs> situate yourself. Cool. Go situate yourself. I need to, I need to situate <laughs> my mind. Is what I'm doing. We came up with yeah, this I phrase. We came up with this phrase yesterday when we were uh, talking about some something regarding what, what that. What were we talking about? I don't know, but we were talking about this, and I've been saying so much <laughs> lately, like, it's a situ it's the whole situation, it's a situation. Yeah. And then, and then, like, kind of that phrase, go F yourself, that I, I personally love saying a lot, but it's like, <laughs> somehow, it's so funny to say, go situate yourself. Just go go situ situate, situate yourself. yourself. <laughs> I love it. Get it under control. <laughs> something, something confrontative about. Yeah. Get the sitch down. Get it down. Mm -hmm. so so let's uh should we revert back to the story a little bit so yeah yeah you are so that's the i you said that you weren't an artist mm. so, but you've got this table and you're throwing wax around that's something mm -hmm. yeah I, so you didn't you didn't go to madison completely you know having not done any kind of uh like creative work before no what's so funny though is that um i have never finished a piece in my whole life I've never mm -hmm. finished anything. And then when I signed up for the True Living Experience, I signed up in February. And so I, was, I thought about it and I said, okay, I have four months, four or five months. I said, I am going to finish a piece of artwork, mm. <laughs> something awesome. before I go. And I ended up finishing five. So just- Awesome. Right. So just for me having the motivation of saying, you know, so it was the true living experience was alive before I was even in Madison mm -hmm. and just knowing that it was happening. And Sabrina, you did such a great job of creating an, a virtual space for all of us to come together and to introduce each other and to share a little bit about our lives. And when we first gathered in Madison, I, I felt so close to everyone already. Mm -hmm. And I think that made the experience so much more rich and it was just easier to kind of drop in and and be really authentic and be real and get to that kind of intimate vulnerability that made the whole weekend really cement mm -hmm. together hmm. Yeah. did you feel that I, in the beginning when we did the the writing i always feel that kind of the writing and the sharing and the reading out loud yes and I did, but I also felt everybody's anxiety. Mm. And so, right, which was a totally normal thing, which I kind of thought of more of as excitement, maybe. I think we were mm -hmm. all just so excited. And and in the middle, and just when we were sitting around in the very beginning, mm -hmm. you know, learning about each other and every and reading the poetry, you know, you could start to feel things loosen up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And you could, I could feel the vibe in the room kind of change and people becoming more willing to be open and more willing to share. And there, and it was just so inclusive. You know, I felt like everybody got such a, so everyone got permission to take care of themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was, I think, one of the things that I took away from the weekend the most, which was giving permission to myself to be able to do the things that I need to do uh, to make sure that I have, you know, that I situate myself, essentially, <laughs> right? Like, I take care of myself and I, and I balance my own resources. 
and mm. I, I stay nourished. And then what I found was that I found I had so much more generosity towards other people after I did that. Mm-hmm. I can imagine that that scenario and where you arrive and you're meeting these people for the first time, you're in a new situation, you've been anticipating this event. And the feeling is all about, especially for an introvert, I think it's all about like these people, like I'm, I'm observing, Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out who they are and how I relate to them. And I can imagine through the process of reading and sharing and, and having these conversations, you know, just like you said, I don't know, it was interesting to hear for me to hear you say that, that it gave you permission to focus back on yourself. Like you're in this very social outward looking scenario where you're in in a new new circumstance with new people but yet you uh, sabrina and i think that all of you found a way to look back inward even though you were Mm. surrounded by other people Mm. i don't know i think there's some something very unique about that especially for an introvert who i like i can imagine when i if i were in that setting i would be much it would be very difficult for me to get back in to myself I could make it happen for you, Trent. <laughs> I totally, I totally believe you. But I think that's, I, I think that's significant. Yeah. And I think, you know, yeah. people that are thinking like, I don't know, I, that, that is a cool idea to me. It's what me. I feel most really passionate about. Really pa- I felt that mm-hmm. from the beginning of teaching 15, 20 years ago was just. Well, how would you describe that? What, what is it's that? A, it's a, it's a, it's a, I, I, I feel, uh, I intuit the room and and the, the energy in this the room the um i i feel like that's part of the thing i'm doing is helping guide that to happen in a way that totally yeah. you know it kind of is a little bit of alchemy to it there's something mm-hmm. you know it, sometimes it's in, it's a, it's in the poem i choose at that very moment sometimes it's in a certain prompt that's kind of unexpected that I know once sharing with another one-on-one with another person is going to kind of open the door to sort of something. Um, Mm. But it's like kind of going the back way, not, not the direct, like I am feeling vulnerable because, (laughs) 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 or I, you know, like what I found very, it was incredible was, just you were all so excited and then you all just boom you were you were like there and ready to Mm -hmm. friggin make this weekend like this experience you I just you're all of you had a both weekends had a real commitment I could tell to yourself to really take this time and and really acknowledge that you're giving yourself this time there was I never saw cell phones I mean the way you respected those boundaries and really saw that it as a time that's just yours was really remarkable you know and it was you raised such a good point there and I think the fact that everybody was so ready to kind of drop in Mm -hmm. and and I think it allowed everybody to share a little bit more of themselves straight off the bat. There wasn't Mm -hmm. so much kind of Trent, like you were saying, negotiating the social boundaries and the social rules. They Mm -hmm. were already kind of preset so everybody could kind of plug in. And then the richness of the insights of the other women there Mm -hmm. and their talent and their humor and their ability to, to look at things in a different way that came out in full force because it was already, the path had been cleared, it was already ready to go. And I think Sabrina, you kind of modeled that from the beginning too, which set the stage for everyone to be really real with each other in a very loving and gentle way. And there was total acceptance and and the sense of being able to, to talk about what you needed in the moment or you know, to share pieces of yourself that that or that would be helpful to other people or you know whatever but it it was just the process of it unfolded throughout the whole weekend and mm-hmm. and it it was like you said it was alchemy it was mm-hmm. you know creating the magic of it from what was happening in that moment mhm mhm there's this there's this contradiction that that keeps keeps coming up for me of of goals or 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 situations and that is that this idea of being social and introspective at the same time you know Mm -hmm. needing to occupy that space and somehow 
hold on to both of those seemingly contradictory states at the same time. And yeah. like this, even like the idea of social introversion or social introspection, social it's like, oh. it's like this contradiction of terms that, that I, uh, again, I think on more on an intuitive level than an intellectual level, which is what, what's kind of nagging me a little bit. I understand the necessity of that and the beauty of that, but it's, it's hard for me. I don't know. I think, uh, I, I, you guys are starting to put that into words and in, uh, in a way that, um, I don't know. I think it's been hard for me to get at. It's kind of establishing a little bit of that feeling of like thinking of you and your best friend Gavin from back in high school. I remember like it, it establishes something that there's, it has to have a, in, the sharing has to have a little bit of humor, a little bit of realness and a little bit of emotional depth of, of longing or loss or desire. But I think it, it has to, to find that closeness and re just a bit of a recognition in another person. Mm. Um, I feel like that establishing that with one other person creates then the whole you can sort of be within the, the larger group because you've you kind of have ha have an echo have had an echo of um resig you know resonating with someone uh mm. you know what i mean like allison do you know what i mean yeah I like know exactly yeah yeah there was well there was i mean fostering that connection i think was one of the things that made the weekend so rich and the fact that you kept the group small Mm -hmm. really kind of intensified that mm -hmm. and made it and made it more natural and made it easier to happen but I loved what you just said this kind of recipe of you know intimacy involving humor and realness and then this sense of kind of longing and mm -hmm. figuring out like you know what's un what are we yearning for and what are the mm -hmm. parts of ourselves that have real value when we share them um that other people can say, oh, me too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, I, what was so funny about the weekend was all of our foul mouths. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like, and, I, and I felt like that was part of the magic too, because, yeah. you know, it kept things from, it kept, you know, as soon as something would, it, it kept <laughs> us in this place where we couldn't, we couldn't drop down and get too heavy. Exactly. You know, was, exactly. Right. That's exactly right. Yep. That's exactly yeah. right. There has to be that levity. Perfect. There has to be that levity. Yeah. And then I think the, in the things we were doing, like out on the grass in the back and the painting and um, and then getting into, as we love the word physicality of it, that yeah. was a big part is that kind of entrance into the creative part of the weekend was, you know, just dropping the storylines in our heads of expectation and self-judgment mm -hmm. and, uh, um, you know, sort of, pre-thinking what it should be or what it was going to happen but just kind of going in with like yes let's do I, this yeah. yes <laughs> I'm showing up yes I'm all in uh-huh and uh -huh. yeah and um and what I so I started to take notes and I wrote down you know some of the main takeaways from the weekend and one of the things for me again as a because I think some people are coming to your workshops that probably have a really strong art background mm -hmm. and then some people are coming who play with it and enjoy it as a hobby. And, and I'm kind of on the, the latter side of that, but being able to show up and to, and to really take away the fact that it was such a mindful experience for me and that it changed not what I do in my life. You know, I, I still go to work, I still do the dishes, I still do all of the things that, you know, have to be done but it changed kind of the how of that what. So it opened some space to allow for more spontaneity and for more, a little bit of, you know, free flow of thinking. Mm -hmm. And it, it really changed the process for me in other areas of my life, my work, my family interactions. You know, I began to think about, okay, well, how can I bring some of this creative energy into parts of my life that are not just making something mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. and I and you know and I have to say I think you guys do this with this podcast too I think I think of this podcast as like your own kind of canvas of words 
it's mm. you sh you show up and there's and there's real life happening here and there's and it's spontaneous but it has a bit of a structure right and mm -hmm. it has you know I think I don't know but it has um, this sense of an understanding of direction but at the same time there's all this permission to explore and come up with new new conversations and to just let things happen within that space mm-hmm mm -hmm. I'd love seeing a few of you, uh, each of you had interesting like Instagram posts after the workshop. Like oh, yeah. I love seeing, you know, boom, you were out with your husband, like outside with, when you had, do you, have, do you have a fire going or something or what was Yeah, it? we were cooking <laughs> on the fire pit in the backyard. It was almost a hundred degrees and we were just, we just did it. We just, <laughs> it was 1030 at night. <laughs> it was Monday night. It was 1030 and we were you just. just did it we just did it and Matt was like we're gonna do it we haven't we didn't do it at all last year we're gonna do it and so we lit the fire and put the corn on there and put the meat on there and we ate at almost midnight yes, yes that's great. it took so long <laughs> oh. it was great and it was you know yeah and I, I love the Instagram relationship also that's what's happening afterwards mm-hmm you know, so what were some of the things, you know, as a facilitator for you? Uh, yeah, I want to uh, know your side <laughs> of the things. Like, what was it like to, because this was a big dream of yours, right? Yeah. Can, can I break in for just yeah, a moment sure. before we move on from what, um, from what you just said, Allison, that, you know, how people don't have maybe or have varying levels of artistic background um, and how this you know, through the experience also got you thinking about how you might take what you were learning here, experiencing here and how it might show up in other parts of your life or other relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think that for me that there's something there and I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to talk about something that I know nothing about. Okay. So <laughs> I want to give that disclaimer, but in, I've been listening to a lot of and reading a lot about uh, augmented reality and one of the things in, in virtual reality and one of the, the the things that they talk about is embodied con embodied cognition, hmm. and this idea that there is there that movement that uh, the way that our body exists in a space or in the world there's there is thought in that you know like hmm. that we're actually processing and understanding things differently through not just our thoughts and our in our brain but uh, through how we Im like, like our physicality, our, our existence in the world. So it seems to me like um, there are some of us out there, and and I see this in my own students that that come to me after uh, you know a full life and profession, and they retire, and you know sometimes I at emeritus I have I have older students, um, and there are these discoveries that they make through the process of making art and through understanding a new material and technique that I see and like these things click and make sense in a new way. And so I think, I think it's not, we, we tend to silo what art is and where it mm -hmm. exists and what it applies to and kind of block it off from the rest of our, of our life. When, when in my mind, when I'm making something in wax, I'm thinking about relationships between color relationships between um, like the oil paint and the wax and how they mix together or don't mix together. And, and these are bleeding into thoughts about my children and my wife and my uh, relationship to people in my religious faith, you know, and, and God and the world, you know, like it's, it's not, there's not a clear separation in my mind between uh, thinking in my mind and thinking through the act of making art, if that makes sense. Anyway, I, I think this idea of embodied cognition is, is interesting and and i think in that in that vein what what sabrina's workshops are doing and and evoking and and assisting in is not just you know a, a cool craft thing that you can come and and play around with for a while and maybe go home and, and scrapbook for in a, in a in a new cool new way but it's it's nope. a way for you to it's a way for you to access something that there is no other way to access access thoughts mm -hmm that you need to go through the process of making and the physicality of using your hands and materials uh, to open up and get, get to. So that's fantastic trend. Totally. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. 
Boom. Drop the mic. That's- <laughs> Respect. Well, I, I, I I wanted to give the disclaimer though that I might be totally misunderstanding the idea of embodied cognition, but that's that's mm-hmm, but that's, that's what I understand that, of it. Yeah. That sounds pretty great to me, and it sounds it, you just crystallize perfectly exactly what I can what the experience of Sabrina's workshop was. Um, can you think of a funny moment? So I love the pontoon ride because I felt like everything broke open. Yeah. And um, and we and we had the most beautiful weather and it was hot, but the water was very still. And we I think one of the funniest moments was when we saw that rainbow around the sun. I mean, I've never <laughs> seen anything too. like this. It was a <laughs> circular rainbow all the way around the sun, and the whole <sighs> boat flipped out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you could hear us probably all the way across Lake Mendota. We were just. <laughs> it was we were, a whole. Yeah. It was a whole thing. It was a phenomenon. <laughs> it was like, really. It was not like yeah. oh maybe that's a rainbow around the sun. It was like no that's a thick bright <laughs> rainbow yeah. around the sun. Yeah, that was so good. And then I think we at some point we were all running to one end of the boat and we almost kind of got in a bad situation where it looked like it was like dropping down into the water on mm. one side and then some other people had to go to the other side to balance it out because I think we were so excited to see this rainbow and and yeah and we just made a whole lot of noise um that I loved that that just was out of left field and completely hilarious magical, and fun. Yeah. magical yeah and I've never seen anything like that and I googled it Sabrina I googled yeah. it afterwards and it's the cirrus clouds apparently they, the ice crystals in the cirrus clouds form little tiny prisms, and wow. the sunlight as it's coming down, and you gotta have the right conditions and the right day, creates the image of a rainbow all the way around. That's, that's incredible. A, that's a cirrus rainbow. That's a cirrus ser- rainbow. Ser- 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 <laughs> ser- rainbow. Serious rainbow. Yeah. 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 And then the other one was when we went swimming, and it was it was. You know, there was just algae everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Like kind of um, nasty algae or? It was the combination of nasty and, and <laughs> you know, decorative, I would say. Yeah. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was and then, you know, and um, one of the ladies climbed out and she had, she had put it in her pocket. Oh, breezy. Breezy, yeah. Breezy. Put it, I didn't want to use her name in case she didn't want to be on here, but oh. Breezy, Breezy had it in her back pocket. And I think, <laughs> and Juanita looks at her and says, Breezy, do you intend to have seaweed in your pocket? It was just this like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was It looked really, like a necklace. It was beautiful. It was very, it was very pretty. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Decorative algae. That was a thing. Could you talk um, about coming to Madison by yourself and like if you, if someone was to come? Like the feeling of, as an introvert coming by yourself and then what it was like being in the city? It was so friendly. Um, even the TSA agents, like <laughs> seriously, it was mm-hmm. such a welcoming environment, such a welcoming, friendly environment. You know, I, I came by myself. I stayed at an Airbnb. Um, it was, a, again, a perfect introvert situation because I had my own exit and entrance so I could come and go whenever I wanted to. I think what struck me about Madison was just how calm it was. Mm -hmm. It was so safe and it was so calm and it was so interesting. But, you know, there was no sense of kind of Latin tension or Mm -hmm. aggression or anything like that. So it felt completely natural to walk around even after dark and be Mm -hmm. out on the streets by yourself. It was very easy to navigate you know you could get the uber drivers were amazing um i talked to one gentleman who was from mongolia Mm. and and we just talked the whole time he drove me up to the capital for the farmer's market Mm. on saturday morning and we had this really awesome conversation i talked to a family that was unicycling (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's right. Wasn't there like Down a little there. one? It yeah, was, how- yeah, no more than probably five years old on a tiny unicycle. 
and Jesus. they were they were going down I was just out walking and they were going down the street and you know mom was going slow enough because it's it's hard work you know cycling I, I've never done it before but I can imagine and so they were taking it slow and I talked and and we just had a conversation about unicycles and while they were out um, yeah there were probably as many bikes as cars and I loved that mm-hmm. it was just so pedestrian friendly and I mean and you could you know they have bike rental places and bike mechanics and it was it just it was such an easy place to be a solo traveler Mm. yeah one of the other things I loved and Sabrina tell me if this is true or not is that my Airbnb host told me that back in the 70s and 80s there used to be an art mandate in Madison where if you were building right where if you were building any new structure or making any sort of improvements to a building, you had to add an element of art. Oh, I and just love that. Right? And so she said, that's where you got all the sidewalk poetry from. Wow. I know that that still is the case in Iowa City. My, my old, oldest brother went to medical school there, and they have some kind of city mandate that a certain percentage of a building's uh, the, the cost or, or budget has to be allocated to art artwork that's great I love Mm -hmm. that idea yeah that was and I think that was also kind of made the vibe of Madison really just welcoming Mm -hmm. to strangers too was that there were these you'd be walking along and then there's this beautiful poem right under your feet in the sidewalk you know permanently imprinted in and or a mural on the on the side of the building and it was it just it was all positive artwork too it was very intentional there was like this intentionality behind it and you know there was and I just I felt instantly welcomed and safe and you know it gave me all sorts of warm fuzzies yeah what was one of your do you remember what one of your favorite episodes was or something that you've held on to I have okay so I have three of them um The first one, not in any particular uh-huh. order <laughs> of significance, but one of them was the Midnight Newtons, because Sabrina, <laughs> I do the exact same thing. Yeah. And I thought I was the only person in the world, and Matt thought I was the only person in the world who would wake <laughs> up at two in the morning and unwrap you know, a breakfast bar from next to the bed. <laughs> Cram it in my mouth. <laughs> I cannot believe you guys do that. That is so oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I oh, ended yeah. up having a root canal. <laughs> yep, I've had two. Yep. Oh, mm. they're no fun. Uh-huh. I know. And then, and then so the dentist bad. is like, well, tell me about your... She, she's like, tell me about your eating habits. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I know. I know. Yeah, so so that just made me laugh because that part resonated with me, and I thought I didn't realize there was a secret club of midnight snackers, yeah. and now I feel totally inducted. Um, and then the other one, I loved loved the interview you did with um, Mila. Oh, yeah, Mila, Mila because yeah, I think that spoke yeah, to that a lot great. of people who have these really significant high school mentors and teachers who Mm -hmm. see them, who truly see them as people and see their gifts and see what they're struggling with and, and reflect that back to them and take Mm -hmm. the time to really help them get on this path that's going to influence the rest of their lives. And I I know that was true for me, but you know, it was wonderful to hear you connect with this person who had done that for both of you Mm -hmm. and to have this conversation so much later in life where you we're fully aware in hindsight of the, you know, process that you were in at the time when you were with her. And then she could remember you and kind of feed back to you that all of the growth that you had. And I thought there was just, there was so much nostalgia there and meaning. It was just sweet. Mm. It's a really Mm. sweet podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that too. Yeah. And the third one was Take the Unicorn, because I just cracked up the whole time. <laughs> with, with Molly, yeah. With Molly, she was a treasure. 
and just the you know you know the idea of going into the senator's office with this <laughs> stuffed unicorn <laughs> and yes and i just you know, and i find myself sometimes re-listening to the podcast and uh-huh. i hear little nuggets of wisdom or um little kind of verbal illuminations that you guys have together through the process of your conversation and they're new it's you know there's new things to discover every time Hmm. well that's awesome i would love you to connect with molly because you guys both are in maryland at some point it'd be fun for you to connect with her yeah yeah this is so nice allison thank you yes thank you well i'm so thankful for the to both of you for just putting this out into the world. And I know I speak for a lot of people and I just say how, how just enriching it is to listen to these beautiful conversations that you have every week. Mm. And, um, and thank you very much for that. And, and so you're always listening you. in DC traffic, right? That's yes. And sometimes I'll just put it on repeat because I just want to hear a friendly <laughs> voice. <laughs> <laughs> stuck on... 495 for four hours. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to talk to a friend. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Allison. Thank, thank you. you thank guys. you. Ladies and gentlemen, Allison Davis. Allison, thank you so much. It was great to meet you and hear about your art making and your experience in Madison. And I hope I get to meet you in person sometime. And speaking of workshops, we have. We have spaces. We have uh, availability in the in the upcoming workshops. Yes, we do. A few spaces left. Um, there's in um, Madison here in September, and Santa Monica, California in October. Woo-hoo. So just go woo. So um, you can sign up. Just go to uh, theroomofthetrees.com, and you'll see a link there. Links. I am really looking forward to having you all uh, come to my neck of the woods, Santa Monica, October. Check it out at roomofthetrees.com. Also, make sure you check out the show notes for this week. Uh, There's some great pictures of Allison's uh, workspace and some of her work, um, as well as some links to some of the things that we talked about. So you can find show notes at roomofthetrees.com. And now, get out there and uh, do stuff. Take a nap. That's what you gotta do. You gotta go out. It's time. You, you gotta go take a nap. Get a cold beverage. Go be happy. <laughs>